everyone. I'm very excited to be here today. I'm Yvonne Tao, and then I teach graphic design at Texas Christian University in Forest, Texas. As a type nerd or type lover, uh, we all know that getting distracted by logos and typeface becomes part of our daily life. As a type nerd knowing two languages, English and Chinese, the experience is even more fun. Whenever I return to China, the logos I've seen in the US are now turning into another form, the form of Chinese characters. So making that visual connection becomes the ne natural next step. So when I see a very good matches, a matches like these, I will get super excited. I'll try to document them, photograph them. I call them um, good visual translation. But sometimes things don't always go the right way like for these brands, Subway, Garfield, Kodak. Well, I probably will give them, give their Chinese logo an aqua face. And then as a type nerd, I could not resist to dive into those cases and try to fix them. And these are my approach to them. And then I'll shamelessly give myself a smiley face. <laughs> well, occasionally I will get hired to do some of these logo translation. Uh, for some brands who wants to enter Asian market. The more I was exposed to the global branding process, the more I learned that it takes more than just a look to make a successful cross-cultural branding campaign. And then when a brand first into a new market in another culture, they're facing a lot of new challenges, they have a lot of decisions to make, but the, ultimately the question is whether to keep or change. This is a dilemma here. Sometimes you want to keep the things the way it is for the originality and authenticness. But sometimes you want to make changes to adapt to the new market. These changes can be applied on package, price, place. Sometimes it's the promotion or uh, product itself. And then these uh, decisions are influenced by various factors such as demographic, economy, culture, or co communication. So here's an example for Microsoft. When they're launching their search engine, Bing, in China, in China, the regulation requires all foreign brands to translate their brand name into Chinese characters. So I'll let you guess what Bing translates into Chinese. I'll reveal that with a fortune cookie. Disease. Disease like a virus on a search engine or something like that? I don't think I want to click on that. So um, in 2009, Bing launched, uh, um, Microsoft launched Bing in China, but they don't want to be called Bing. Instead, they modified the spelling into two characters, B, E, which has a very nice meaning, uh, respond with no fail. So the look, the sound, and the meaning represents what the brand is. Another example is by McDonald. Entering India, should they keep all the marketing mix the same way it is as if it was sold in the US? If you look at different factors in India, soon you will find out that more than half of the population in India are Hindu, who worship cows and they don't eat beef. So, McDonald introduced Chicken Maharaja Mac as their star product in India. The next example is Adidas. Adidas' new designer winter line achieved great success in 2011 in the US, so they can't wait to bring it to China. So they kept everything the same, but just to translate the language. Sadly, it did not meet the expectation. You might have guessed, well, they should, probably should have changed the model. Um, that's really not the main problem here. We actually been see, used to seeing Western models everywhere. The main problem is we don't ski. Ski is limited by Chinese geography, and it was never one of our mainstream sports. So the ads did not make the connection with Chinese girls. And not only that, they find out girls in China would rather watch TV series or sh on do online shopping over than going to the gym, like me. Um, so they, next year, they decided to on target of encouraging more sports among Chinese girls by launching this campaign. It's called All In For My Girls. 
As you can see here, what they're trying to do is to steer sport into a young social lifestyle, an opportunity to hang out with their girlfriends. It was an immediate success. Not only boost up the sales by 60%, but also the campaign has won a Golden Effie Award, which is like the Oscar in advertising. So after all these case studies, you make it the point. Research is an important step but it seems like every case is so different on what to keep and what to change. So what do we research on? Is there a systematic methodology? Or how do we embed that in our classroom or education? With all these ideas in my mind, I approached Dr. J in um, strategic communication department at, at TCU and proposed a experimental interdisciplinary project. Dr. J's class is called Global Grad, uh, Strategic Communication. It's a graduate level course with 11 students enrolled. Uh, what they do for a semester long project is to develop a multimedia communication campaign for a US brand that wants to enter Asia markets. My class is called Computer Application, which may be called Web Design in your department. So it's a junior level technology class, and my main, main task is to teach technology that helps students to build online presence for business. A typical assignment would be a student building a website for a business um, that they choose to do. And then you could imagine what they would like to do, little cafe or flora uh, or ballet dance studio, something I would say a little boutique-y. So I thought this interdisciplinary project would be something out of their comfort zone. Global branding project is divided into two phases. It started with phase one, the graduate students doing research on their own. Meanwhile, our graphic design students um, learn, are busy learning how to build websites. The 11 graduate students were divided into four groups and given the assignment. They were, each group were to uh, nominate a US brand that is not yet available in the foreign market. So Dr. J has limited their choice into consumables because consumables are heavily bonded by culture. And after they bring back the product, they were to do, do background research and their marketing potential analysis using SWOT analysis, looking at what's the strength, what's the weakness, is there any opportunities or threats? Moving right along, they would do research on Asia countries and find out where they should sell this US product. To support their recommendation, they were to provide data on demographic, economy, communication, um, culture, and et cetera. Moving to phase two, that's where our graphic design students hop on board. And unlike our, uh, the grad student had a whole semester to work on this campaign, we have only uh, three and a half weeks. When I assigned the project, I divided my 12 students into four groups as well and asked them to build online presence for this campaign. So prior to their meetings, I would give them the 20 page paper, uh, research analysis paper written by the graduate students to, uh, as their re uh, weekend of reading assignment. They were definitely a little surprised to see how much work they have done for each project. Um, so my thought process is, Instead of having our graphic design student just being the executing hand for this campaign, I want them to be more involved in the decision-making process, giving them the opportunity to offer their professional creative suggestions, learning new cultural factors, and bounce some design thinking ideas. They may need to learn how to persuade non-designers on the team or deal with different personality, but I think that's all part of a uh, great learning experience. So I will use rebrand Laura Bar in Malaysia as one example. Laura Bar is an energy bar based in Denver. Together, the team have decided to do some logo modification. In, Mal in Malaysia, they didn't need to translate the language, but they decided to remove the dots on the logo because they find out the dots on the, on, on the regional logo, the dots are added to make the logo look a little bit more exotic or authentic. But in Malaysia, their branding has been repositioned. They actually want people to know that it's a brand from the U US. So they remove the dots to make it more Western. And in Malaysia, the, the 
regulation requires all dietary dietary symbols on all packages. So my students spend a lot of time looking at symbols and its relation with health benefit and religion. Even though it's for a brand that is from far away, but they don't want to feel distanced. So they introduced a new flavor using local ingredients and trying to portray that idea as being fresh as well as offering options that locals are already familiar with. As they're brainstorming how to associate Laura Bar with something uh, that is healthy and full of energy. One, one of my students was actually a f soccer player on um, TCU team, read on the research that soccer being um, the number one sports in Malaysia. So she saw the opportunity and proposed the idea of launching this campaign at an important football league game and having a well-known player as their spokesperson, and they come up with this tagline, feel for your football. I thought it was pretty clever. But we all know that mistakes are more valuable lessons we can learn from. And let's see this case for rebranding Boon Chikapa in Singapore. Singapore is a multicultural country with four official languages. Our Singapore decided to do um, to keep the English version, but to add the Chinese characters right next to it to make sure the small group of non-English speakers can still read it. They also decided to change the logo color from hot pink to red, which is favored by Chinese culture, and it is 74% 40, uh, here. They, on their type-heavy package, they've decided to add a small illustrative um, pattern to help the non-English speaker to identify the flavor a little quicker. They also decided to um, add new flavors, such as curry shrimp or ginger lime, because they find out that in Singapore, people like, prefer salty flavor snacks over than sweets. So as them putting all the pieces together uh, for their website, email, newsletter, and uh, social media ads, I noticed something on their um, um, main image on the landing page. And let's zoom in. And I asked them, what is that? They said, well, it's um, Crush It. It's their tagline. They wanted to portray the idea of uh, Boon Chikapa coming to Singapore. As you may see here, well, Singapore skyline image um, by itself doesn't have any problem. And the tagline by itself doesn't have any problem. But when you put them together, be careful. You don't want to portray an idea of terrorism. So quickly, they fixed it with a more appropriate uh, approach. Another mistake is by China team. Uh, they wanted to rebrand Peeps. And it's a, we all know Peeps, it's a traditional marshmallow candy that is usually shaped in uh, little yellow chicks. Like I mentioned before, Chinese government requires uh, all foreign brands to be translated. So well, one day I saw China team working on um, the logo modification translation. Well, first of all, I'll give them a smiley face uh, for um, the visual translation. I think they did a pretty good job keeping the essential of the letter forms. However, there's something. I ask them, what is that? Then they know that I speak Chinese, so they start to lose confidence. It's Chinese for peeps? So I ask, have you double checked? So they, yeah, they quickly typed in um, online translator, and this is what pops up. And they say, well, look, those strokes and then characters look the same. Well, first of all, we don't use traditional Chinese anymore. We use simplified. And that is something that I already find out in their research paper. They, but they didn't make, connect the dots. But that's just a minor problem here. And then I asked them, well, if you trust online translator that much, how about you copy paste those two characters and click on image? This is what pops up. Yes. The English word peep have two double meaning. It could be peep in peeping tongue. Or it could be peeps, peeps, like what the uh, little sound, the, what the chick makes. I believe letter is really what the brand meant. So if as a Chinese young mom, if I saw that brand on, on the, in China, I'd probably turn my kid away from that marshmallow candy. So I didn't want to hand over the answer, um, but to ask them to research again. And later they came up with this co correct translation, which I'm pretty happy with. 
and asked them, what's the, your resource? They told me, well, they find out there is a Chinese version of Oh My Donna Had a Farm. So uh, the last team is, um, wants to rebrand a kind bar in South Korea. Kind Bar is a New York-based snack bar with a mission of creating communities that is healthier with more empathy and kindness. So for their campaign in South Korea, it revolves a lot of creating movements and activities for charity. For their final presentation, all teams like to put their um, design on the digital mockups. We all know that students love digital mockups. Um, they put their social media ads on a little phone case to make it look more realistic and professional. Um, when, so when they're presenting to the client, um, they usually have a whole collection of it. They just pull from it from, without thinking. And this time, it reminded me of something. When I visited Seoul a couple years ago, I would say 90% of the cars on the road are either Kia or Hyundai. That must mean something. It really shows they like to use their own brand. So let's do a little bit more research. We find out that only 14% of smartphones are iOS. The majority use Android system. And if you were to pitch an idea to people from South Korea, wouldn't it make it more sense to use a Samsung mockup? And so in this case, it's really, we learn about attention to details. In conclusion, we learned a lot from this project. Um, Sorry. Before every decision is made, there is so much time and effort that goes behind the scene. The research, the analysis, the strategic planning, um, to support the idea of what to keep or what to change. And for this project, um, I wanted to create an opportunity for students to open their eyes, to be a little bit more curious about different cultures from a um, diff uh, different part of the world because maybe someday when they get a chance to work on a project like this, they will learn to how to make um, uh, research on their own instead of relying on stereotype or making assumptions. Thank you so much, and if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please email me. Seriously. Thank you.